This is me, Undead Viking. I want to talk to you about this game. It is called Summit, the board game. Now, this is a game about you and your other players uh, trying to climb a mountain, like it could be Mount Everest or K2 or something, but it's a very dangerous mountain to be climbing. You, One or more of you most certainly uh, will lose their lives in, in the chase to be the first person to get to the top and the first one to get back down. Uh, I wanted to point out something. You can tell people die because, look, some of them don't have faces. They're just like the nameless ghosts that wander the mountains. Or it is art that just isn't completed. But anyway, those are spooky. Look at those. Ugh. Anyway, so uh, <laughs> the game um, is, is a heck of a lot of fun. Uh, it is like a tile-laying game that combines um, a lot of chaos and some dice rolling. And also uh, a, a great deal of... Um, uh, chicanery or, or uh, shenanigans, if you will, uh, between the players as you try to prevent them uh, from beating you uh, in the race to get to the top of the mountain and then back down safely. So uh, let's dive in. I'll show you how to play Summit and we'll come back here and I'll tell you what I think. All right, cool. All right, this is Summit. I'm going to show you how they play the game here in just a second, but I do want to go over some of the things that you're seeing in front of you so you have a good idea of how the game is played and you know some of the mechanisms that are going to be at play here. All right, so obviously this is the game board. Um, we are showing you the competitive version of this game. You can play a cooperative and also like a solo game, but um, I played this competitively. and I, I, I played around with the solo rules just to kind of get a feel for the game, but I found the competitive game to be a lot of fun because it's a race. It's a race to get all the way up to the top of the mountain and all the way back down uh, without dying. But there's a lot of stuff going on uh, beyond that, so let me just show you how that works. All right, so uh, I've already gone ahead and set up the, the, the halfway camp tile, the summit tile, and also uh, the base camp tile. And I did set this on the easiest level. You can see there's these little markings to see the different levels, uh, all the way down here to Crazy Man, you know, Legendary or whatever, if you want to actually try to take take down the mountain um and you know obviously the further down you are the tougher it's going to be to get all the way up to the top and then all the way back down so you know i would i would advise the first time you play the game to play it on one of the easier levels first just so you can kind of get your uh your mountain legs if you will all right so over here you're going to see a track and over here you're going to see a track up here this is just a scoring track um like this is the halfway point this is for the summit this is the for the halfway camp on the way down and this is for the base camp so so if you're like the first person to reach it, that's worth four points. If you're like the third person to get there, it's one point and so forth. And you just, you score those points and you place those markers on each one as it goes. It would like for the halfway camp, you just have to get to the tile. Um, you have to get to the top for the summit, but for these tiles, you just have to get on them, uh, you know, on one of the spots on the tile. And then you consider to have reached that spot to get those points. Over here, uh, this is the blizzard track. Um, as you're playing the game, uh, you will be forced to roll this weather. Um, normally weather will, if you just roll uh, like a, a snowflake, uh, and then there's, there's a spot with like uh, two snowflakes, that just forces you to eat some food because it's cold, and then you know, obviously you start running out of supplies. Um, anytime that this die forces you to use uh, a uh, resource that you don't have, uh, then you have to lose a health point. So you don't want to run out of food. Uh, but over here, this little mountain with these two little things, that means there's a blizzard. And that means you're going to go up on this blizzard track. And once again, depending upon the level of difficulty that you pick for the game, this will determine where you are on this difficulty track. All the way down here at the bottom for the easiest one. And then you start here if you want to play at legendary level. So if you hear that you just go up one, and you can see here this is a food, 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 and you start getting into oxygen here. And as you slow climb you'll have to expend those resources uh, if you get to that point if you can't you're gonna lose a health for each one of those that you can't spend obviously that's going to kill you and if it manages to get all the way up to here uh, the blizzard is just so cold it's going to kill anybody that's on the mountain so you don't want to be on the mountain you want to be face safely back at the base camp and on your way home on a plane flight in a 747 uh, before that happens. All right, so uh, there are three decks of cards in this game. There are events. Uh, during your turn, you're going to roll this die. If it comes up with an E, uh, you'll 
pick an event card. Events have good and bad things that affect one or more players. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's just a kind of a crapshoot if, you, if you're, if you're uh, pulling those out of there. Um, you know, and it is literally uh, like you can't really plan for it, but that's kind of like climbing a mountain. You can't really plan for every eventuality that's going to happen. Uh, this is the equipment deck. I'll get more into the equipment here in just a little bit. But um, you can pick up some equipment as you're uh, just through happenstance and, and luck as you're climbing. If you happen upon also one of the other players that happened to unfortunately die, you can scavenge uh, equipment off of their body if they have some, uh, which is kind of grim, but sometimes you have to do it. Uh, you can, uh, this, there is a very good drafting uh, technique when you to get your opening uh, set of equipment when you start the game. Though it is not necessary that you have to take your equipment uh, because equipment can weigh you down and will make you slow, so just keep that in mind. Finally, there are these. These are the Karma cards. Now, this is this game has this track over here. It is the Karma track. You start off right here in the middle, and uh, it tells you how many karma cards are in your hand you can possibly have. In this case, there is a hand of four. Uh, as you do good things with these karma cards, karma cards can either be negative karma or positive karma, and they are played on other players. They can be things that heal them, which would be positive karma. They can be things that uh, make them slow down or, you know, make them so they can't, uh, they lose equipment or what have you, all kinds of things. And I'll show you some of those in just a little bit, and that would be negative karma. Obviously, if you can slow down the other players, they're not going to be able to climb the mountain as fast as you, and then you're going to be, you you know, theoretically winning the race. However, uh, you'll notice that there's these, these victory points here, all the way down to negative two here and all the way up to 12. So the more good things you do, the more points you'll get uh, for doing those good things. So it's kind of a an interesting kind of seesaw there. You want to help out, you know, you want to kind of keep yourself in the middle maybe, or maybe even get up to the top if you think you can win. Uh, but you also, you know, obviously want to be able to keep going and keep making it up uh, to the top of the mountain. Now, the interesting thing is that if you actually go up to the top and back down, uh, you have the ability, you don't have to leave, you can just keep playing karma cards, and theoretically then you could either slow other people down to the point where uh, you could... Um, like, you know, kill them because they can't get off the mountain or like, you know, in, you know, be, do nice things to them. So like you actually get up on the karma track then. So the final scoring gets better. So, you know, you have things like that going on. All right. So to begin with, uh, each player is going to play a character uh, that is going to climb the mountain. Um, they're going to have different abilities and names and nationalities and what have you. They have different, each one has a different ability that makes them unique. Like uh, Guy Levesque here, he, on his turn he can consume a food and he can gain two health. And then players cannot negatively affect your food supply. So that's cool things like that. Um, I have here uh, this, this Swedish gentleman, Jordan Thorvaldsen. And uh, Jordan here uh, has the ability on his turn he uses one less food uh, than the weather die roll will require. So, you know, that's pretty good. And uh, players cannot affect um, his hand, you know, his... his, his uh, the, the cards in his hand. So, uh, so you have things like that that give you uh, abilities. Now, um, you'll notice that there are these little uh, yellow markings, and those are in exactly where they need to be at this moment. You notice that his speed is at the top level, it's at six. He hasn't got, grabbed any food, he hasn't grabbed any air, and you know he hasn't adjusted his weight or anything, and his health is obviously perfect right now. So now, as the game progresses, if like he's, I decide I'm gonna start off, because you can have all the food and all of the, uh, the 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 air, the oxygen you want to, and mind you, you get to replenish at, at uh, the halfway camp. So you keep that in mind. Um, so, like if you said, I'm going to have five food to begin with. You just put your little marker in there. This is really cool, actually. And you'll notice that then you're going to increase the weight by two. And so you just go like that. And then you can say, well, and then I better make sure I have at least. You know, two oxygen. You know, I can get more at the base camp when I get closer. I think I'll be fine with two oxygen. And so then you increase the weight by one more. And so now you can see the cumulative effect there by increasing the weight means that I have to reduce my speed by one. So I'm going to go from speed six to speed five, like so. And so that's how you keep track. And as you use up your equipment, you eat your food, you use up your, uh, your, your oxygen, you then lighten your load and then you can get it back. The same thing goes, you notice how when you get hurt, you start moving slower. If you get healed, 
then you start, you know, you get your, your speed back as well. Now I mentioned that there is a card draft. There will be a number of cards out, a uh, number of players. Uh, so, and then you'll be able to draw, like basically out of a pool. First player gets first pick, and it's a serpentine. So if it goes one, two, three, four, then we go four, three, two, one, you know, and so forth. And so, and you, and you get equipment. So you can take like here skis, um, double your movement when descending, but it cannot be combined with other movement bonuses. But notice it's three weight if we're going to carry skis up to the top. Uh, here's a medical kit, you know, really lightweight. Uh, discard to gain uh, health times three or cure altitude sickness, a stomach bug, or contagions. And those are like karmic events that can happen to you. Um, a carabiner, uh, discard to increase speed by two uh, for one turn. Notice no weight on that. You know, it's kind of a nice little item. Um, a helmet, discard to ignore health loss due to slide, fall, snow slide, or collapse event. You know, so you, you just you get the you get the idea that each of these, you know, even something as simple as rabbit foot, players cannot use or be affected. A player cannot be used or be affected by karma cards. You know, so you so you, you kind of get the idea of what equipment is going to do. It's going to be things, and it can even be you know like a guide. That, that is going to help you, but he eats your food, so you got to make sure you have a ton of food if you're going to have him. Um, so, you know, just keep that in mind that the equipment works like that. Now, to actually take your turn, what you're going to do is you might have noticed these two giant stacks of triangles over there. You're going to have a hand of tiles, and you get three tiles to start with, and also you get your karma cards to start with as well. And what you're going to do on your turn, um, you're going to choose if you're going to move your, your current speed or if you're going to do something without movement. Uh, if you decide to skip movement, uh, you can decide you can just go ahead and get rid of all these tiles and draw a new tile hand, uh, basically because, you know, the ones that you have um, just are all bad. Some of these, um, you know, I didn't have any uh, the ice tiles here, but I'll show you one here in a little bit. These are pretty, pretty straightforward and pretty easy to climb, actually, comparatively. Um, if you are under the effect of, uh, like somebody has given you a negative effect, like a sickness or, you know, something that's pretty moving or like a bad effect as far as, as a card or a token, um, you can skip your movement and roll this die. If you manage to get an E on there, you can go ahead and discard that effect. Um, and then, you know, that's your entire turn. If you don't roll the right number, you still, that's your whole entire turn. Uh, so you might have to try again uh, next turn. Um, you can then also, if you have a karma card you don't like, um, you can discard a karma card. These are things you can do. You can always discard a karma card. And the reason why you might discard a karma card is that you get to draw back up to your hand size at the end of your turn. That's, I should mention that if you increase your hand size by going up on the karma, uh, like row here, you don't automatically draw a card. You only, you only actually draw that, um, when you actually replenish your karma hand at the end of your turn. Likewise, the same thing holds true if you decrease your hand size. You get to keep all those cards in your hand, you just aren't going to, you don't have to discard one. If you go to four of the three, you don't have to discard one of your cards. You get to keep those, and, and but, you know, obviously then you're not going to, you have to use up two of those cards, then be able to draw a new card, or discard two of those cards before you can draw another one. So, to move, it's very simple. Um, you start, you know, on, on, on the base tile, and each knot on one of these tiles is considered to be one movement. And you have to attach, whenever you attach a, uh, a, a tile to another one, and you can only attach a tile if you're immediately going to move onto it. So just keep that in mind. So if you have a knot here, that would be one, if you start here, it'd be one, two, and if I wanted to climb another one, uh, then I could go, you know, three, four, remember, Jordan here has a, a movement of five, and then so for my last one, I, I could go like this, and, and five, I'd be in that tile. And so I, I've already climbed a fair amount here, and I've gotten it. But and I got kind of lucky with my with my tiles. Or and mind you, trust me, the other players that are going to be playing are going to be doing whatever they can to slow me down and inhibit my movement. So you know, just keep in mind that that might seem pretty easy. But I like those tiles are good. Now you'll notice, like here's an ice tile. It's like got these three here. But notice how it's 
like very slow going because of the fact that they're on. And also, let's be honest, I would have a ton more equipment on me. I didn't really take any, and my speed would not be as fast as that. So, and like here, check out this crazy tile, like with, with all the knots on there with the ice tile and things like that. So, and that's why like the, the tiles are, you know, pretty varied as far as, you know, being good or bad. And so, you do run into problems also when you just can't, you don't have a tile that gives you the right pathing uh, that will allow you to get to the right tile. Like, you know, you're trying to get to this, but like if I don't have a tile that actually would connect me in that way, then I really wouldn't want it because of the fact that, you know, I didn't want to. Now, there is something interesting. You actually can have a situation where people will want to use your tiles and they go on to pass through you. Now, the thing is, is that it is up to you whether or not you want to let somebody pass. If you let them pass, you actually gain a point on the karma track. If you don't let them pass, you lose a point on the karma track, but obviously you slow them down. And, you know, and if they aren't going to, if you won't let them pass, then they either, sometimes in a lot of cases, they can't do anything. They end up just sitting there. Or, you know, they, they, they have to find a different path to go the way that they want to do. After uh, you've done all that, you will then roll your die. Ooh, I didn't get an event, so let's just say I got an event. You get an event, you draw this uh, compass. Immediately draw and place an additional tile. It does not need to connect to existing tiles. Oh, all right, cool. So that's like a not as bad one. So we can draw this one, and um, well, see, this is one of those things too where you know, if I placed this, it isn't really going to help me, but you know, I could use it in a way to like kind of jam somebody if they're trying to go that way but i mean that's that let's just see a couple more of these just so you can see what they have here uh like contraband all players except the one with the highest karma may immediately gain two food or one one air one oxygen so you know not having good karma not necessarily is the best thing so to speak or equipment malfunction immediately discard one item and lose two health uh ignore this card if you have no items so you know obviously a varied effects coming out of that event deck you never know for sure uh after you do that then you're going to refill your tiles so draw three more tiles so you know i didn't get bad ones here that's actually pretty lucky of me i refill those tiles and then um you can also get refill the karma if i used any of my karma cards let me just show you some of these karma cards just so you can see what these do so like coattails uh discard your turn you notice how this one has a minus Two, so I lose two karma. Discard in your turn. Switch your position track marker with target ranking above you. Um, generous. Uh, target gains at least one food. Um, you know, so like that's a plus one. Uh, verbal assault. <laughs> Reduce target speed uh, for one turn by two. That's a negative. Uh, Eye of the storm. It's a bonus. Discard in your turn. Target may target may skip drawing an event card on their next turn. So. You have these different things that are going to be both positive and negative, obviously. Um, so then, after you refill your hands, and after you've rolled on a, you rolled the other token as well, you roll the weather token, that would cause uh, Jordan to eat food, but he doesn't have to, remember, because he does one less than he normally would have to. Uh, and then you pass the turn marker to the next person, and they'll take their turn and do the exact same thing that you did. And slowly, once again, as we said, slowly start scaling and climbing the mountain, trying to get to here to score points, here to score points, then back down to here to score points, and back down to there to score points. Then after all is said and done, um, you total up uh, like your total uh, from here and from here, and whoever has the most points uh, will win the game of Summit. Now, uh, I, I found this game to be both very much a simulation of, of climbing. Obviously, you're laying tiles, so I mean, it wasn't like I really felt like I was putting an ice axe into a glacier and slowly climbing up it. But I did feel, you know, the immersion or the thematicness of this. I, mean, I you know, I wouldn't really call this a Euro. I mean, it was just kind of like, this is like one of those tweener games, if you will. Because there's dice, there's, there's random elements and things like that. And so I don't really know what to really describe this as other than being kind of like a just a thematic Euro game with, you know, some meanness. Because, I mean, obviously you are really trying to screw with the other people as they're going. And so 
I, I found the game uh, to be uh, quite fun, actually, with uh, my group, because my group is well known for its backstabbing tendencies and our uh, excitement and delicious feeling in uh, in ruining somebody's turn and, you know, and literally uh, shoving somebody off a, a mountain if need be. But anyway, uh, let me talk more about that uh, in my final thoughts. All right, you should have a really good idea how to play Summit and the ghosts that walk amongst them. You know, I was really hoping there'd be an abominable snowman, but there really just wasn't. I mean, you could put him right back here in the trees. He comes out and eats somebody or something. But, um, eh, whatever. Uh, so there you go. You, like I said, you should have a really good idea of how to play the game. Um, you know, I'm sorry I didn't touch on the, the cooperative and uh, the, the, the solo game. Um, you know, there is a lot more to that. As far as, you know, you have, like, Sherpas uh, that actually help carry things. There's just another, another big, long track that you keep track of. Um, there's a time of day track that you also follow along. And I think you could, I, I think maybe the designer would, would have thought about or wanted to think about adding those elements uh, to the, like, the competitive game. But I think the, the whole process of everybody kind of, like, beating up on each other as you're climbing the mountain made it difficult enough that the, those um, mechanisms just uh, didn't make it uh, into the competitive version. That's just my gut feeling anyway. I could be wrong. Um, regardless, the game itself is a heck of a lot of fun. As I said, my friends and I had a lot of fun, uh, you know, just having that competitive race. I like racing games. I like games where, like, the definitive end is right there. The first person to the top, first person back down. And, um, you know, and obviously, uh, you know, it could have just been that. But the addition of the karma, which I think was ingenious, uh, is just adds that extra element of balance uh, to the game. You know, um, you know, it is really, really tough if somebody, like, keeps messing with you and putting cards down uh, that hurt you and, and keep you, like, hammered down and unable to move or just having all these bad things happen to you. It makes it really tough for you not to retaliate, but you know that if you don't, you, you if you've worked on getting your, your victory points higher, you have that, like, okay, fine, he might beat me uh, to the summit, but he's only going to get, like, two more points for doing that um, in the long run because I'm actually being good, you know, it's going to be worth four or five points, you know, and so you have that kind of, you know, like, figuring it out, even though you really, really, really want to, like, do something to mess with them pretty badly. Um, you know, it, it is very tough when somebody says, can I pass you on, on the way up, and you're like, oh, by all means, you know, you want to say, no, how about if I just rip your piton out and watch you plummet to your doom instead, you know, but of course, you know, you know, theoretically, if you will. But anyway, so that's why the game is fun for me. Um, you know, like, I enjoy the race, I enjoy the karma, I enjoy, um, you know, the the fact that you're not only kind of dealing with the game, like with the, with the weather and the blizzards and everything else like that, you're not the game trying to stop you, but you also have to deal with the other players trying to stop you as well. And I, I find that to be a very, very good concoction to a very, very competitive and tense and fun game. So there you go. Uh, if you want to check out Summit, or if you have any questions about it, uh, just go ahead and ask away. I'll try to answer those to the best of my ability. Um, as always, thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video. And until next time, I'm the Internet Viking, and I'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day. All right, take care now. Bye-bye.